preserving historic buildings, there's now only one remaining example of that ancient institution, the all-male pub. Pat Gleason's has been a sanctuary for men for bordering on 200 years, a pub in the good old style, and with a strict code of conduct for its clientele. No cursing, no slate, no gambling, and no women. Pat's is the epitome of the character pub, and it's full of characters, some of them drinking here for 40 years. Least your footsteps stray. Remember the pint at Tuppence? I drank at a Tuppence in Madras of Parliament Street. I was only 16 years of age playing handball. And I bought a pack of woodbines for a penny. Five. Playing handball? Yes. Looking at Pear Wells from all the trust and Danny. That's right, Johnny. And, uh, but I only drank a bottle of stout that time. The lads was hardier than me, but for when I see them drinking, I drank too. And I drank from that. I never stopped drinking since. <laughs> and you make it out of ten pints yeah. per week for the last fifty years. That would have been it. Five thousand pounds. Uh, five thousand. Five thousand. Was it money well spent? Money well spent, the greatest thing in the world. Was it you? No, I never had a doctor, only for the flu there a partner ago, and another particular train, too sick after beer. <laughs> I drank a long time ago. I was I was surprised when Rusty Fitt was the point. And I was working. I told the sick Bob make up and I could go in and have a pint. Then I got a, a, not a few chances. <coughs> you got a hard one too now. You only three bob a pint now. You got a four to nine here, but it, it, but but only time you pay three bob for. I come in here since I was six years of age, but not for to drink beer, <laughs> but for groceries. And the man that owned the place at that time was Pat Leeson's uncle, a man by the name of Pat Welch. And I often went home to my mother. And I cry him. When you come up for the bread, he get on to you. Martin, he call everyone. And he get on to you. And he say, Martin, my bread wouldn't go with the butter that your mother have. When you wouldn't be buying the butter here, you see. <laughs> <laughs> and I get all pushed up and I go home crying. And my mother would come up and she'd give me horror all over it, so she would. <laughs> I was thinking of times of Friday, Stephen. No, no, no. Never heard of the way. Because the porter was great at them over the wood. Is it different now, do you think? Ah, it is old, old contains, old tin stuff. And what's wrong with that? <laughs> it's not natural. <laughs> <laughs> but wh why wouldn't it be natural? How oh, could it? Or, 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 or what's good over containers? The only thing good over containers. Take now the tin to food that's going to do. It's the same thing with the porter. You got nothing good old country, only all the wood. Why, Johnny? What, 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 what would you think of the. You're drinking a pint there now. Is it not up to standard? Well, sure, I'm getting used to it now. <laughs> <laughs> but did you ever get into trouble over drinking? Oh, God, I did. I, 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 I done a month in Haver Hill in 1923, 28 years' detention. I was Bishop of PA. <laughs> I landed in Harbour Hill and there was a big man, oh, he was surely 20 stone, <laughs> Sergeant Major. And he said, do you know we three in lines here? But I was told, tipped off, don't open your mouth, Mum, with the world. And silence, I looked up, I see silence in Harbour Hill. Silence here. I emptied out my kit on the double, double mash, down to one, four, two, cell. Was there. And up in the morning at six o'clock, buckets out. You had a bucket, three boards, and a scrubbing brush and a cloth. You had to scrub that. Now you move then to the bell ring. Out, eight o'clock. Empty your bucket back in. Right. And you had your clothes on that whole time. Yeah, but your clothes off the But anyway, next thing comes in was Javelira. <laughs> Javelira was a prisoner in 144 cell. Well, he was out then, nasty. The next door, out of souls, a free station. I, uh, a buddy of mine was a Dublin lad, and here we had a cross cut. 
fear was up and down. He says, come on, we want them for the fire. And so I looked at that. I don't know what to eat in the sack. Oh. <laughs> I saw nowhere. Come on, he said, and it might hit me in the back of the neck. <laughs> I do nothing, what could you do? He had a revolver, not. So, uh, next thing I see De Valier and he kicked a football again a wall. Two commenters in the free stairs around me and the revolvers, you know, like the black and tans, uh, they picked it up and they had them lovely strapped here in the side and Dev kicked the ball again the wall and at least satisfied. Next thing he goes over and he gets a hatchet, big tree, takes a couple of wallets out and had enough. He walked in and they just followed him. He used to pass on with the compound with me but Joe had to scrub his cap. <laughs> and I, uh, and I, never, I got no... I never got no pension. They never gave me all they done and broke me heart. <laughs> I'll tell you now, we're a big boss of you, God rest her soul, Mary Cody. And she was very conscientious. She wouldn't have any women in here at all, or any girls. She had a rosy coming through out here as well. She served children with sweets and teas. Were no women. <laughs> Absolutely no women. You couldn't cuss. Or you couldn't sit in front of that fire where you are. You'd be put out. <laughs> she'd tell you, she'd be serving there and she'd tell you, check down the blower. <laughs> She, she, she removed the blower, you be the blower, and you'd move out. That's what had to open. What, what have you got against women? What have you got against them? Because they said that women should be at home in her own house, mind their children. <laughs> Let her go with her husband if she wanted to be here. What do you I mean? Even if she wanted to come here with her husband, you wouldn't let her in? She'd go to another place, you see. And you were banned, when women are banned, were a pub like this. There are plenty of supermarkets and other pubs to go to. Why let a, 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 a man take his wife to another pub? And there were only one woman allowed in here in the whole history of the house. And she was a travelling woman. And we used to enjoy her. They weren't the common type, no, they were above the, the level, like, you know. They were very respectable. They were Scotch people. They had a caravan above now at a place called the White Bridge. And they used to come down here every night for the time that they were here. And the old man, a drink stout. And the woman, her oh. drink was rum. Rum. Uh, how do you mean you'd enjoy it? Was she an entertainer? They'd tell us about their travels. Yeah. And we, we used to, at, in the kitchen inside now, that's where they used to sit. And we used to be in there. That's where the ring board used to be. And they were very... Entertain and protect. It was education to live it, listen to him. So it was. Oh, very nice. But there were, there weren't a dirty word ever spoke. And in regards to anyone ever come in here, if they carry on in regards to bad language, you're tipped on the shoulder and you're told, shut up. And if you don't shut up, if you still carry on, the door is open and you're cut with the shoulder and you're marched out to the door and you're told to get out. Well, in the old days, I remember a little pub me and Freeze down yonder. And in the kitchen were the shawls, which was lovely, about ten of them. And there they'd be all bottles of stout, no pints. And shawls and a she apple, which was lovely to do see. Do and they'd have a do jean of a clear right. pipe. And the next thing I know, we'd run, I'd put down her hand right. and she'd take out a can of snow. That's right. And here they are. <laughs> oh, Lord bless you. Well, the snuff will come down here. <laughs> they were never given here. The only way what was done here, to tell you not and only the truth, if a Sunday or a Saturday night, when you'd be going out, you may be busted for, in regards to having a drink the following day, and there were no Sunday service here, you see. Well, the publican they'd give you five or ten bob, which I paid back to them during the week then. You know, it was a pay night, Friday night. <coughs> but there were never any credit given here. And in regards to gambling, if you wanted to gamble, if you wanted to put the stake, you'd have to hide them under that ash tray. Because if you came in and see it, the whole thing was swiped up and thrown inside the counter. 
Not no one would be allowed a penny stake was there was was a, there was stake here. He wouldn't allow gamble on any sort. And there were no such thing ever as cards. No cards whatsoever. The grandest crowd I ever met. Now I've been no old crowd in the Royal Dead. We had a race occasion here years back. There was an old man named Nimbrook, he's dead. And uh, we used to be inside. It was all rings that time. Game of rings. And uh, there was an old chair in there, I don't know as a gun or where it is, but poor name. Be no old, see, as you were old, you were allowed to sit in this chair. <laughs> and Nim was older than I was, like. Poor Nim sat in it. Now, Nim, God rest his soul, died. Poor Sam Nolan came along, and poor Sam sat on it. He died. <laughs> and Sam died. <laughs> your turn. And Jim Cullen comes on then, never of mine, and poor Jim died. And uh, the chair was there this night, and so I went to sit. I forgot about the desk and all, and didn't I go sit in the chair, nasty? Being that coming up the next with the rings, and the governor says, Joe, you're next. So I jumped up, I jumped up in the chair. So I think I'm alive. I'm just sitting in there today. We had one man, the Lord Mercy, and I'm coming in here. And he'd been crossing the house here together, blind. He used a quarter barrel with a bottle of rum in two days. And there were a a girl here, the Lord Mercy, and her first cousin of Pat Leeson's. She's died lately. And if she was bringing him in a pint and a top on it, Mary, he'd say, I don't want fraud. I, I want, I want the, the beer. The BT glass. He'd, he'd think a quarter barrel in two days. And he'd think a bottle of rum along with it. He goes as far as a place called the Lighthouse Hill, that's above the cross. He may come in here and have four or five drinks. And he go and he stand up there for five minutes and he come back down again. And that's the way he used to go. I just to cost him at an average of about four pounds in a day. And that was in the cheap time. In my time, I'll tell you, in my old time, I remember the glasses, you see, down in Parnell Street, that was Mike Dorn's, and it, it, it could really happen here now, I don't know, in door times. You see, you call for a pint, you drink it, they had no inside water, cold or hot. They'd go to a tap in the yard, they'd fill a basin, and the water was there under. Well, if I left that much port, they were sick after they'd leave it down. They'd leave all the glasses like that. You come in for a drink, they just fill that. There's no pumps much that time under the barrel, like, probably. They fill it up. And the reason they didn't wash the glasses because it was too cold in the winter time. They had only a basin of water. And they had no towels around them. They used to wipe their hands in their legs, you see. So when you see the trousers on a public in that day, you could shave yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but even Pat's pub is now seeing its last days. The old pub is on the site of a planned corporation housing scheme and will have to be knocked down. Already the license has been sold and the houses around the pub are a heap of rubble. In a matter of perhaps a few weeks, these men will have to do their drinking in the softly lit, carpeted pubs of today in the company of women. And do they like it? Oh, I'll break my heart. Break my heart. I and all the lads. We're going all breaking up, and the point is, we'll never meet because there's plenty of pubs to go. But then when you go in after leaving here, the barman or the boss is here, mm -hmm. this fella, Pat Leeson, he won't appreciate you, he won't like you. He'll live there for about 12 months when you give him about 20 or 30 pounds, then they begin to like you. <laughs> <laughs> when this house bust up now, the business is all in it. I'll have a drink below at the cross in a place called Doherty's. I'll have me drink there of a Sunday night and I'll enjoy it. But not as much as I'd enjoy it here. The way it was here, we were all here and you'd imagine every second that there were going to be a clapping match where the talk would be going on. Oh, it would be far from it. They won't have much time for thinking of because I'm 74 last September. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
you're, you're the official <laughs> choir master here. Now. Why are you? Oh, I, I think I'm 22 instead of 70. <laughs> By getting out in front of all those chaps, it's lovely. It's a good part. The grandest singer is in Ireland. 